Hey guys, welcome to episode two of Making My Own Machine Device. In today's episode, we're going to be preparing the casting patterns. So just quickly, to cast something, we first need to make a pattern of it, and then we're going to copy its pattern in sand, then we're going to remove the pattern from the sand and fill the hole left behind by molten cast iron to make the shape. So here you can see the actual vise we'll be making. This is the vise body, the fixed jaw over here, the movable jaw lead screw down here and the shuttle or the nut. Styled on the Kurt Anglock system, actuating this screw over here pushes this shuttle forward. Now this angled portion pushes down on the movable jaw and has the effect of both clamping the workpiece and pulling the jaw down as it does so. This prevents your workpiece from lifting up, which can be quite a problem sometimes. Now, once I'm happy that everything in the model works, I can go ahead and prepare the parts for casting. I do this in a few ways. One is I make sure that all the surfaces that are going to be machined have a little bit of extra material, just so I have some room to clean them up. Two, all the radii and draft angles, which will make the part easier to be removed, should be put in. In this case, I went with a sort of straight wall of only two and a half degrees. I also go ahead and scale the entire part up by about 1% to allow for material shrinkage. Now some of the simple parts will get split down the middle to make them easier to remove from the sand. This particular part will get a sand core. In this case the pattern will be made out of solid wood and these, the core prints, will help make a cavity in the sand. Later on a core made of sand itself will be located in these cavities and when the part is cast, the sand will be driven out and where the sand was will leave behind a nice cavity which will form a hole. Okay guys, so that was core design and it can be as easy or as complicated as you want to make it. As you can see, this was one of the earlier examples of what I was going to do. Now, for this vice, you really only need three surfaces, I guess. You have the top surface over here, which the jaw slides on top of. You have the bottom jaw over here, and you have the surface over here, which holds the lead screw. And I guess you have these surfaces over here, these places where you would bolt the vise down. So bearing that in mind, this was supposed to be a early first edition where I just had a simple pattern that I could have an outer pattern and an inner pattern over here, and the two would simply separate. But as you can see, if we do a half section view, that that wasn't going to be very strong. I had minimal material over here. So then I went back and I looked at the Kurt Weiss design, and I realized why it was that they had these cutouts over here. And these are for the core prints, like we saw in the last example. That allows you to have a nice flat solid base with my logo on it, and an open spot which serves all our purposes. We have the top surface, over here, the bottom surface to restrain the jaws, we have somewhere for the lead screw to go, and we can bolt the vise down. Okay, so here we are in Fusion. I'm not going to go too deep into this because this is an entire video unto its own. As you can see though, I had the parts sliced up into cake slices that would fit the MDF board that I had. The only thing I really want to share with you guys was this adaptive versus troughing or outlining operation. Take a look at this. So this is the first adaptive clearing option. If we fast forward a little bit into the program where it wants to start doing the outside of the part, take a look at what it has to do. It has to literally go and double its cutting time by doing this adaptive little clearing away where it edges away the material. In comparison, look how much quicker this is as a ramp cut. Now what we're doing here is we're taking a 2D cut, but we are successively ramping down throughout the part to make this contour. Now this works really great if you want to cut out pieces for pattern making. Here you can see the vice body and there are the parts of the core that I was going to use. And then eventually this is what we were left with, a uh, nice cookie cutter design. Now, as you can see here, obviously not everything came out perfectly because this was my first time. So here we are doing some manual finishing on the mill. You don't always need a vise, but sometimes it really would be handy. Man, if only I had a vise. So the super top secret core patterns have been shot together with some brad nails and some wood screws. It's been clamped overnight. And now to use some wood filler, and if that doesn't do too good, we're going to switch over to professional grade car body filler. Okay, so here I am doing a little bit more finishing on the parts. 
there's still some rough edges, some contours that need to be done, some deburring, some things like that, um, making sure that all the parts fit. Yeah. Now the part that I'm working on here is actually the core for the movable jaw. That will provide the little 45 degree angle that I need for the Anglock system within the casting itself. That's going to hopefully be a pretty nifty feature if it comes out right. So the last few days have really just been an ender cycle of painting with sanding sealer, sanding them down to flatten them and painting again and until I get that right, I'm being a bit of a perfectionist. It doesn't have to be all as complicated as I'm making it, but this is gonna look really nice. I'm hoping when it comes out. This is all but done. And I've got my other little pieces. These are all been sanded and painted. So then I was almost almost done. I just had to do a few more things, but I could finally get a really good look at how this device would look with it on the mill table. I just had to drill the alignment holes for the base over here. And as you can see, that is looking very nice indeed, actually. First time I'm seeing this thing as like one whole base piece. Oh uh, yeah, drawer is gonna come on there, other way. Do these still need to get machined. And uh, yeah, then I have to deal with all of the issues of what I'm going to do about the lead screw and how to machine that. Well, anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself because we still have to make the thing before we worry about the end things. At least if you make it, you can correct it again. If you never make it, it will forever be a theoretical exercise. So that is that, guys. That has been the first part from CAD to finishing of the homemade machine vice. I hope you guys liked it. I hope you guys look forward to the next episode where I'm going to be doing the core and making that and messing up a bit. But thank you for joining me. And if you like this video, do subscribe and uh, stick around for when part two comes out. I'll see you guys then. Enjoy it and take care.